I think we're working. <laughs> Hi everybody. Thank you to everybody who's joining me. You're joining everybody from Facebook and Instagram tonight. So maybe there's about three of you watching, which would be awesome. Um, I hope you're having a great day. I'm just going to kind of just chat for a wee bit while we'll see if everybody shows up and wants to watch live. Um, the videos will be on Facebook and Instagram for a while afterwards anyway. So um, for anybody that shows up late, you can watch them. Um, and while we're waiting for everybody to join us, I can tell you that um, we're going to do a little reading from When the Mask Falls. Um, I'm going to do a little Q&A, so if you think of any questions you want to ask me, drop them down in the comments and I'll try and get through them all. Um, and right at the very end, I'm going to be giving out some shout outs um, to anybody that's bought themselves a limited edition hardback. Um, so there's still time to do that. If you want to do that, there should be a link um, in this video. If there isn't, then just go on to any of my posts on Facebook or if you're on Instagram, go to my profile and you'll find links there. Don't worry, I put them pretty much everywhere. So. If you can't find one, then um, then I don't know what happened there. But um, so I think we're probably just going to have a, a wee get started. So this is my book, When the Mask Falls. I'm Caroline Ubrican, Um and I've wrote this available at Kickstarter at the moment. Um, I'm trying to raise the money that I need to put this into print. And by doing that, I'm asking people to buy advanced copies of the book. Um, so this is a book that um, basically follows the story. Of a girl called Alice um, on the back it says uh, meeting a stranger in a bar Alice grabs a rare opportunity to reinvent herself and quickly slips out of her tedious married with two kids life and jumps into a new more exciting life with Johnny but what starts out as a bit of fun quickly turns sour as her true identity starts to unravel and she realizes there are danger consequence dangerous consequences when you cheat on Mr. Mundane this really is a book about identity it's about um, Alice figuring out a new identity for herself, but it's also about Alice finding out that um, other people in her life have also been lying about their identity, and then what happens when that all starts to unravel. Um, so I've chosen a wee section from the book that I want to read, um, so I'm just going to get started and read that, and I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> the man pulled the balaclava over his short blonde hair and rolled it down his neck, leaving only his blue-grey eyes visible to anyone that looked, but they wouldn't look. It was just after 3 a.m. No one would look. At least they wouldn't until he was long gone. And then all they would have to look at was the grainy CCTV images he would inevitably leave behind. He climbed out of his battered Ford Escort and slammed the door shut behind him. He inhaled sharply and shivered violently as he took in a bracing minus 10 degree breath. He qu quickly glanced over the frozen car park. Apart from a couple of people taking a brave smoke just outside the main entrance, the place was deserted just as he expected. His leather-gloved hand drew his 15-inch Delta Force survival knife smoothly from the sheath that was fixed to his hip, hip, and pulling his leather jacket tightly closed, he angled the knife vertically along the length of his arm and marched straight for the hospital's maintenance entrance. He punched in the key code and the door popped open. He poked his head through the door, cautiously checking for any sign of life. There was none, just as he expected, so he committed his whole self and pulled the door closed behind him. So far, so good. Of course, he had three weeks to plan, replan, and plan again his unwelcome hospital visit. Nobody expected her to stay in a coma for three weeks, and there had been doubt for a while she would have come out of it at all. The boss would probably have preferred that, he thought, but now that she was awake, he had a job to do. A job for which he had already been paid handsomely. He walked along the maintenance corridor and turned into the kitchen, empty just as it had been the four times he had practiced this journey. The service elevator waited patiently for him as he swiped his staff pass across the sensor. The lift cooperatively drew its doors back and he stepped into the vast space. His heart started racing as the lift rose through the building, cheerfully dinging as he passed each floor, 11, 12, and the final ding, floor 13. His heart skipped and he could feel sweat dripping down his back as he waited for the doors to slide open again. This was the bit he had never practiced, never at night anyway. He was running short of breath as he turned out of the lift and headed straight for the bathroom. Get a grip of yourself, he snapped as he glared at his black woolly face in the mirror. He had taken everything into account, left no detail unchecked, but never had he considered the effects of the adrenaline. How could he? He had nothing to compare it to. He rested the knife on the top of a waste bin and placed both hands on the edge of the sink while he took deep breaths and reminded himself of the script he had practiced a million times in his own bathroom. He had it word perfect, just as he had the last few times. He just needed to calm down, and after a few minutes of deep breathing, he felt his thumping pulse starting to ease off. He checked his watch. He had to hurry. The two coppers 
that he was told would be on duty would be knocking off soon, and then he would be too late and would have to start over tomorrow. He didn't think his heart could take another battering like the one it was getting tonight. It was now or never. He checked his pockets, two syringes, just to make it look like they weren't on, on in on it. He picked up the knife, had a good shake, and growled at himself in the mirror. He was ready, and he stepped out into the corridor and marched towards the ward. His stolen staff pass granted him access, and he turned right and headed for room one, which was fortunately the first room he would come to. The place was empty, thank goodness, he thought, as he headed straight for the two guards who sat dutifully outside her room. They looked straight at him as he approached, head held high, trembling inside. Pull, Whiteman, he said, disguising the tremor in his voice. Yes, they both said, looking together, looking up at him. Time for a nap, he said, pulling two preloaded syringes from his pocket and jabbing one each into their legs. The officer obligingly slumped and drifted peacefully off to sleep in the chairs. Without hesitation, he quickly pushed into the room. The nurses weren't due to check it on her for at least another 30 minutes, so he had time. The plan was working perfectly. The room was pitch black, but he could clearly make out the outline of Mrs. Walker under the sheets, and he watched for a minute as she snored peacefully, completely unaware of the danger she was in. He was getting turned on, just thinking about the power he held in his hand, and he could feel himself getting hard. He cursed himself for getting distracted, and took a deep breath and refocused. He padded quietly around the bed, gazing at her. She really was a very attractive woman, he thought, as he sat down beside her. Placing the sharp edge of the knife against her throat, he rang her fingers through her hair, teasing and stroking as he gently brought her out of her peaceful sleep. Wakey, wakey, sleepy head, he whispered. So that was one chapter from the book. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. So um, I will answer some questions if there are any. I'm just getting the questions here now. Okay, let's have a wee look here. And uh, where is your favourite place to write? That's a good question. Um, and actually, I can probably write pretty much anywhere. Um, I like it quite noisy, so if I'm writing, I have the TV on. Um, I quite like also to write um, in coffee shops, um, just because it's a lot of clutter. And if you need a wee bit of inspiration, you can usually look around and you can see people that will help you. Um, so I hope that answers that. Um, <laughs> okay, um, what is your stance on pineapple on pizza? Pineapple should never go on pizza. Never, ever on pizza. Um, have you ever put someone you know into a piece of writing? <laughs> yes, um, but I'm not going to go into any of those details because that would be um, telling. But um, most of my characters have something of somebody in them. Um, the Alice character in When the Mask Falls has a lot of me in her. And I draw on experiences of all of my friends and people that I know to sort of help me make my characters look more, more realistic. Um, where is your accent from? That's a good question. Everybody asks me that. Um, I'm from just north of London in Hertfordshire, but I moved to Northern Ireland um, a good 10 years ago. So it's a wee mixture of Northern Ireland and North London. But um, um, a lot of people think I'm from New Zealand. Or from Australia or somewhere like that. Um, so what else? Um, oh, how long did it take me to write this book? Well, that's a kind of difficult question to answer because the book itself has been a work in progress over a number of years, but I've been working on it sort of in stages. So the first um, the book was written, maybe it took me about six to eight weeks to get it drafted, the very first draft, um, and then. I probably put it down for a while, came back to it, edited it, put it down again, picked it up. So all in all, it's taken a few years, but um, if I just got on with it from start to finish, it really would just be a matter of weeks. Um, where did you get your, what does that say? Sorry. Where did you get your idea from? Where did I get my idea from? Sorry, somebody's writing these questions down for me. <laughs> Very quickly. Um, the idea from the book, um, it came from... It was sort of inspired by a book I'd read by James Patterson. There's a moment in the book there where you realise that two characters in the story are actually the same character. Um, I loved that moment. Um, it was a very exciting moment. But um, it also came from a writing exercise I'd done. I was writing another book um, at the time and I got really stuck. I had really bad writer's block. So I did this writing exercise um, that somebody had told me to write. Um, basically you just write whatever comes into your head. You let your imagination go riot. 
um, and just see what comes out. And once you've decluttered your brain of um, all of that kind of stuff, then you should be able to have a clear mind to go back to write what you were writing. Um, that didn't work for me. What had happened though was that I wrote what is now basically chapters two and four of this book. So I used the idea that I had um, been so inspired by by James Patterson and those two chapters and really I came up with the story from there. Um, it was really sort of me asking questions of Alice as well. What kind of things could go wrong um, if you met somebody um, for the first time? You know, what kind of things might go wrong with that? Um, and what would happen if people that you thought you knew actually turned out not to be um, who you thought they were, which um, is one of the most dangerous consequences of cheating on Mr. Um, Mundane. What's this one? <gasps> Wilma should be in my next book. She should be in my next book. Um, I'm a, a huge animal lover and I have issues with animals that get hurt in books so um, she could be the heroine couldn't she she could come and save somebody maybe she could come bite some bad guy and rescue the heroine um, how many words or pages is it a, is it a short book um, ooh, short is a bit um, subjective it is 97,000 words um, and it's estimated to take about six hours to read which would be an average kind of size for a novel um, it's not Stephen King. Um, you're not going to be sitting there struggling with it for weeks and months trying to get through it. It's um, a fast paced kind of book. Um, it's hopefully quite an exciting book. I really like to read books that have a lot of action in them um, that you don't really want to put down because you're really scared to kind of miss what might be coming next. So hopefully that's the kind of book that um, that it is. Um, is there any more questions? Back to the there some Instagram problems. So. Okay. So apparently we had a few issues with Instagram. So Instagram people, I'm really sorry if you missed it. Go to Facebook um, because I think the video's gone on okay on there. Um, my username is Caroline O'Brien, just the same as it is on Instagram. And you'll be able to catch up with it there. Um, sorry, um, these kind of things kind of do happen. So um, I promised to me shout out, so we've got one more here. Will there be a second book? Um, will there be a sequel to this book? Um, there could be when you get to the end you can decide whether you think there should be or not um, it is open enough that there could be um, but I have written a, a different book which I wrote in November um, for a thing called um, National Novel Writing Month um, where the challenge is to write a 50,000 word novel in one month um, so I drafted the first draft of my next book which is called The Fourth Notch um, during that month um, it was speed writing and it was really exciting because you don't have time to really plan the story you have to know your characters really well to make this work um, and if you know them well enough then when you put them into a tricky situation in the story then you can really kind of just ask them how do you think you would solve this problem and then they have to fix their own problems and that makes for a, actually quite a nice sort of way to write a book it makes it a wee bit more realistic and a bit more fun so, um, so there is going to be another book shortly. Hopefully that will be out in time for Christmas. Um, I'm going to start editing it as soon as this Kickstarter promotion has finished. Um, so yeah, so that's all the questions. And I did promise you some shout outs. So let's have a wee look and see if anybody has bought themselves a hardback in the last wee while. Um, so we've got um, quite a few guests, people. So I don't know your names, I'm really sorry. So I can't give you a shout out other than to say guest number ending 4443 thank you very much for joining us um so who do we have here that has what the hardback uh colleen daniels thank you very much um let's go down the list Emma francis thank you uh, another guest um jennifer grumble you've got a hardback too thank you very much ken tipmas thank you wendy bracken thank you as well um rosalind mcmen You've got a hardback too. That's awesome. Um, Urias, I'm not sure if that's how you say it. I apologise if that's not. You can tell me off whenever you see me, whoever you are. Um, Susan Houston, Elaine Lynn, um, and some more guests. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you to everybody that's bought any of my books. There's um, paperbacks as well as hardbacks. Um, but the hardbacks are the limited edition ones, so they're the really cool ones. There's only 300 of them. Um, Going to be made at all. Um, and once they're gone, they're gone. So um, the hardbacks are kind of special and there's lots of different ways to buy a hardback. You can get one with, um, they're all autographed, but you can have your name printed in the book. Or if you want to be a character in the next book, which is the fourth knot, which I just mentioned, then um, there's a few options that you can buy where you can get that too. Um, we've had a really um, amazing response. 
um, we've had people backing me from the UK, obviously in Northern Ireland, um, even from Switzerland, South Africa and USA, which is amazing that people those far away are actually getting to see this as well. And we have just one very last minute question here. Will you publish your next book through Kickstarter too? Um, that's a really good question because right now my nerves are completely wrecked, so maybe not. <laughs> but um, we're doing quite well actually on Kickstarter. I think we're, at, we're, we're nearly at a quarter of the way there. Um, and actually we're only a few days in, so it's um, so actually we're on target really to, to get through the Kickstarter. So probably, but right now I'm a bit shaky on the nerves, so I'm not sure. Um, so that's everybody, I think. I think there's no more questions. That's great. I've had a good time. Hopefully you have as well. And um, I'll do one again in a few more days, hopefully. Thanks for watching.